Greetings everybody, Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be part three, the end of uh, the color white in the Bible. So with that in mind, let's go. All right, let's go to uh, Mark, the book of Mark, chapter 9. We'll start in verse 2. And after six days, Jesus, Jesus taketh with him Peter and James and John, and leadeth them up into an high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his raiment, his clothing, and his raiment became shining, exceeding white, exceeding white as snow. Meaning this shining white clothing that he's wearing is even brighter than snow. So his raiment became shining, shining exceeding white as snow. So as no fuller on earth can white them. Now, what was a fuller? Somebody was a fuller. Um, they were a cloth worker. And if you were working with, let's say, cotton, uh, you would be cleaning, cleaning it and trying to make it look as white as possible. Now, why is this raiment shining and white as snow? Why? How come it's not uh, blue or purple or brown or green or black? Well, seems to me that uh, white is uh, isn't white associated with cleanliness, perhaps lack of sin. Hmm, I don't know. That's what that's kind of how I look at it. So, his raiment became shining, exceeding white as snow, so as no fuller on earth can white them. You ever heard of fuller soap? Yeah. It brightens the color. So, white clothing would be bright. That's why they got brighteners, right? And there appeared unto them Elias. Now, Elias is the Greek rendering of Elijah and you got to remember the New Testament was written in Greek not Hebrew so when you hear these people tell us to go back to the Hebrew uh, I don't think so there's a reason why the Lord used the language of Greece the Greek language to for the New Testament so and there appeared unto them Elias, the, the prophet, with Moses. Now, what did Moses represent? The law. Now, Elias, Elijah, represents the prophets, and Moses represents the law, the law and the prophets. Moses died. Elias, or Elijah, has not died. So, and there appeared unto them Elias with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. So, life and death, the law and the prophets. Isn't that interesting? So, Elijah and Moses represents the law and the prophets. Where did Jesus talk about the law and the prophets? Well, in Matthew 22 and verse 36. Somebody asked Jesus this following question. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. 
on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. The law and the prophets. There you go, right there. And you got people that want to take you and make you keep the Sabbath. Oh, you know, oh, it's the Ten Commandments, not the two. Well, Jesus said, love the Lord and love thy neighbor. And that that's all the law and the prophets. That's everything summed up into two commandments. I mean, how can you beat that? But uh, then there's others that want to add to it. But I don't know. If it's good enough for Christ, it's more than good enough to me. So, Mark 9, 4. And there appeared unto them Elias, Elijah, with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. And there appeared unto the, uh, oh, I'm sorry. And Peter answered and said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias. Uh, tabernacle, it's like a little, like a little hut, you know, a little place to set, uh, stay. Verse six, for he wist, knew, for he wist not what to say, for they were sore afraid. And there was a cloud that overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved Son. Hear him. And suddenly, when they looked round about, they saw no man anymore, save Jesus only with themselves. And as they came down from the mountain, he, Christ, charged them that they should tell no man what things they had seen till the Son of Man were risen from the dead. And they kept that saying with themselves, questioning with another what the rising from the dead should mean. And they asked him, saying, Why say the scribes that Elias must come first? You know, why do the copyists of the Bible say that Elijah must come first? Verse 12. And he, Jesus, answered and told them, Elias verily cometh first, and restoreth all things. And how it is written of the Son of Man that he must suffer many things and be set at naught. But I say unto you that Elias is indeed come, and they have done unto him whatsoever they listed, as it is written of him. Now, if you read another account of this, it tells you that uh, Jesus likened John the Baptist to Elijah. Now, Elijah is going to be one of the two witnesses in the book of Revelation that confronts the false prophet and the beast. And I did a hour and 40 minute study on the life of Elijah. And it's very, very possible. I think it's going to happen. But uh, I think the false prophet at, uh, is going to claim to be Elijah. So there's going to be two people running around claiming to be Elijah doing miracles. So just remember something. The man of sin, the son of perdition, the beast, the Antichrist, comes before Jesus does. You can't tell that to the pre-trib rapture crowd. They don't believe it, but that's what the Bible teaches, and I'm not going to argue with them. So... You know, when the uh, when the Antichrist comes, they'll uh, they'll welcome him with open arms. I'm sure. You know what I was thinking is, what if there's a pre Antichrist that comes before the real Antichrist? You know, like uh. I don't know, maybe uh, maybe the Pope will claim to be Christ or whatever. And then the, uh, the you-know-who comes from Jerusalem and destroys the Pope. I don't know, maybe. And then goes to the temple and claims that he's God. A lot of people would say, oh, oh okay, it's been fulfilled. I don't think so. But I don't know. 
That's just my guess. All right, let's go to Mark chapter 16, verse 1. Now, this is after the crucifixion. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him, you know, the body of Christ. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, there came unto the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. Now, if Saturday is the Sabbath, then this is Sunday. But we shouldn't spell it S-U-N day. We ought to spell it S-O-N-D-A-Y. Day of the sun, the day of the son of God. Not the day of the sun in the sky. I don't worship the sun god. But, but the way the calendar's been messed around with, um, I, I don't know. I don't know. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. Now, the sepulcher is a grave, people. Verse 3. And they said among themselves, Who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. And entering into the sepulcher, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white, clothed in a long white garment. Why isn't it pink or blue or yellow or red or green or black? Why? Good question. Remember, in, I think it was Isaiah, was it Isaiah? It said that uh, though your sins shall be as scarlet, they shall be as white as wool or white as snow, or I'm paraphrasing, but yeah. So they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrighted. And he said unto them, Be not affrighted. Hey, don't be afraid. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go your way, tell his disciples and Peter. <laughs> you gotta love Peter. That goeth before you into Galilee, there shall ye see him as he said unto you. What? I thought he was dead. He's risen? Amen to that. That's the gospel, people. He's risen. That is the gospel. Risen from the dead. All right, let's go to the book of Acts. The Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verse 1. Uh, the book of Acts is generally attributed to Luke, the physician. The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up, taken up. After that, he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he, he had chosen. Did you know that Christ chose? Christ makes the choice to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Uh, forty days. Did wilder was, uh, was Israel in the wilderness after Egypt forty years? Uh, was the ark uh, Noah? Did it not rain for 40 days and 40 nights? Did Jesus fast for 40 days? That word 40 uh, has some significance. I'm not sure I could do a study on it that would be make it that would be a worthy study, but uh you know, it's something to consider. So, being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, 
But wait for the promise of the Father, which, saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. So, would you rather be baptized with water or with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit? Verse 6. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Hmm. See, this is what the, the Bible's all about. Israel and the kingdom. And he, Jesus, said unto them, It is not for you to know the time or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria. Uh, why Samaria? Samaria was the capital of the northern kingdom of Israel when they split away from Judah. Yeah, it was the capital city. Jerusalem was the capital city of Judah. Samaria was the capital city of Israel. You know, this is basic Bible doctrine, and uh, almost all preachers avoid it like the plague. So, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. You see, Israel was scattered to the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Jesus was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Very important, a cloud. And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in purple apparel, blue apparel, green apparel, brown apparel, black apparel. No! Two men stood by them in white apparel. Evidently, all these holy beings are in dressed with white. Verse 11, which also said, so here it is, these men dressed in white apparel, which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? You know, what are you doing looking up in the sky? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. You saw him go up to heaven in a cloud? He's going to come down from heaven in a cloud. Oh, yeah. Look into Project Blue Beam. Project Blue Beam. They are able to do holograms that look very, very real. Will they use that to mimic a coming of the Messiah? I don't know. But it is something to consider. They also have something called LRAD. L-R-A-D. Long Range Acoustical Device. You can have two people 10 feet apart. Maybe 20 feet. And point this device at one person, and they could hear a voice loud and clear, but the person 10, 20 feet away doesn't hear anything. It's like a beam. It's focused. And you'll think something, uh, you're hearing things inside your head. So can they use something like that to... Uh, Blow trumpets and have a Messiah come down from heaven uh, in the clouds? I don't know. They could. 
Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And by the way, when you read about the, the city on seven hills on where the horse sits, they always tell you Rome. Did you know Jerusalem is always on seven hills or seven mounts? Yeah, it is. And uh, if you're interested, look it up. Seven Hills, Jerusalem. All right, let's go to Revelation chapter 1, starting in verse 8. Jesus speaking words of Christ in red. I am Alpha and Omega. Uh, Alpha. Do you know that's where we get the word alphabet from? Alpha is the uh, first letter of the, alpha, of the Greek alphabet. A. Alpha. B is beta. That's where we get the word alphabet from. Alpha, beta. Alphabet. And omega is the last letter. Jesus is saying, I am the A to Z. But this is in Greek, not Hebrew. So when people tell you they're going back to the Hebrew roots, they're liars. Because the New Testament was in Greek. There's a over there's thousands of Greek partial manuscripts of the New Testament. There are zero Hebrew ones. And if you read the book of Acts, you'll know who it was that was trying to kill all the Christians. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. It wasn't Rome. Although Rome might have carried some sentences out, but they weren't, they didn't care. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. I, John, who also am your brother and command, companion in tribulation. What is tribulation? Trouble with a capital T. And in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, which, uh, uh, I'm sorry, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God, for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Do you know John was the only apostle that didn't, was, was not murdered? He died of old age. He was the only one. All the rest died for their faith. Oh, yeah. I don't know how true it is, but according to legends, they tried to kill John, and they couldn't do it. I don't know how true that is, but it makes for a good story. So that's why they banished him to Patmos. Now, Here's a good question. If they killed Peter and James and and Mark and Luke and you know all the rest, Stephen, why didn't they kill John? Why'd they banish him to Patmos? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe one day I'll get to ask him. So, verse 10. John speaking, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, words of Christ in red, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus. And unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. Now these are all churches in what was uh, at the time Greece. Some of these churches now are in a country that they now call Turkey, 
but in the t this time period, it was called Greece until the Ottoman Turks invaded and uh, disposed of the Greeks. You know that religion of peace? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Did you know that the Church of Laodicea voted against the book of Revelation being put into the canon of Scripture? They said, no, we don't like this. We don't like this book. Because the Lord didn't say anything nice about Laodicea. So they were like, yeah, no, I don't think the book of Revelation is real. I don't think it belongs in the Bible. So they voted against it. Just a side note. Verse 12. And I, John, turned to see the voice, Christ, that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. Uh, this is going to describe what Jesus looks like. Verse 14. His head and his hairs were white. His head and his hairs were white like wool. And of course, there's a certain group of people will say, oh yeah, man, he hey, it'd be woolly. He hey, yeah, he hey, be woolly. It doesn't say his hair was woolly. It says it was white like wool, as white as snow. Snow white? Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? Snow White, my dear queen. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. Not just his hair, his head as white as snow, right? And his eyes were as a flame of fire. You ever looked at a gas stove? What color is a gas stove? Uh, last time I looked, it was blue. Hmm. Did he have blue eyes? That's my guess. Verse 15. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. Now brass has a nice uh, golden, golden brownish color. You know, like a, kind of like a tan, I guess. But do you know what happens to brass when you burn it in a furnace? It turns white with a kind of a golden tint. And his feet like unto fine brass, if, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. His complexion was shining like the sun. Think about it. Wow. All right, let's go to Revelation chapter 3, verse 1. And unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, Do you know that God assigns angels to churches? Yes, he does. And unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest, and art dead. So they're alive, but dead spiritually, it seems. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. God is telling a believing church to repent. If, therefore, thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments... 
their flesh, I guess. And they shall walk with me in white. And they shall walk with me, Christ, in white. For they are worthy. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment. White raiment. And I will not... And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. Uh, does that mean he can blot your name out of the book of life? That's how I see it. So all these people teaching eternal security and once saved, always saved. Uh, maybe they're wrong. Maybe God can and will Blot your name out of the book of life. Wow. Let's read that again. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. You know, I want to hear the Lord say, yep, I know Chaplain Bob here. He was far from perfect, but he's better than he used to be, I guess, hopefully. So, verse 6. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Oh, you know I got to keep reading this. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, uh, you ever heard of the thing, Philadelphia is called the city of brotherly love? Well, that was a long time ago. But phileo uh, is a Greek word meaning love. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. If the door opens, if the Lord opens the door to you, walk through it. Answer it. Go through it. And if the Lord shuts the door on you, you're lost. You're out of luck. Verse 8. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength and has kept my word, and has not denied my name. What is that name? That name is Jesus, who is the Christ. Verse 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews, and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee, because thou hast kept the word of thy patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly, hold that fast, which thou hast, that no man take thy crown." Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Oh, yeah. All right, Revelation 3, let's skip down to verse 18. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed. Hmm. And that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, eye salve that thou mayest see. All right, let's go to Revelation chapter 6. Now remember, uh, Revelation is not in chronological order. 
It is not. It, it jumps around. Verse 1. Revelation 6, 1. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red. Uh, by the way, communism, their color is red. And uh, there's been more deaths under communism in the last hundred years than, well, more than I can count. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword, war. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse, and he, had, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, a measure of wheat for a penny. A penny was a day's wage for an unskilled laborer in the days of Christ, in the days of Rome. And a measure is basically about like a loaf of bread. So basically, a measure of wheat for a penny is a loaf of bread for a day's, uh, uh, an unskilled laborer's, a full day's worth of work of an unskilled laborer. So there's going to be a shortage of food, I guess. A measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a pen, penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death. And hell followed with him. Hell always follows death, right? Unless, of course, you're in Christ, then it'd be uh, heaven but or paradise. Yeah. And his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword, or, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. So a fourth part of the earth is going to die. With war, starvation, death, and beasts of the earth. I wonder if those are two-legged beasts. Verse 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar, the altar of God. I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Here it is. These people were killed for the word of God. Verse 11. And white robes, white robes, and white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Hmm. White robes. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal and lo, there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became his blood. People, there's going to be a massive earthquake. The sun's going to become black as sackcloth of hair. And the moon's going to become red as blood. And you're going to know that's when the Lord is getting ready to return. And the stars of heaven fell into the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, 
when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Boy, that's going to be some kind of earthquake. All the mountains and the islands are going to be moved. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come and who shall be able to stand. See, this is Revelation 6, and it's already talking about, you know, it's getting ready to happen, people. The second coming. All right, let's go to Revelation 7. Now, we can read the About the uh, 144,000, uh, 12,000 from each tribe. But we're going to start in Revelation 7 and verse 9. After this I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne, and about the elders and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces, and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing, and glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might be unto our God forever and ever. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, what are these which are arrayed in white robes? Who are these which are clothed with white robes, right? And whence came they? Hey, uh, who are these guys dressed in white? Where do they come from? Verse 14. Well, that's the Bob translation. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white, washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Woo. Therefore are they before the throne of God, serving day and night in his temple, and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters, and God shall wipe away all tears. Revelation 15, 6, And the seven angels came out of the temple, God's temple, having the seven plagues, clothed in pure, pure and white linen, and having their breasts girded with golden girdles, Huh. All right, let's read Revelation 19, starting in verse 6. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come. For the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife hath made herself ready. People, the church down here on earth today is a whore, not a wife. I use that word church loosely. You know, just because a building's got a title on it that has the name church in it doesn't make it so. But you talk about going to church, you don't go to church. The people are the church. 
You know, you can go to the garage, but that doesn't make you a car. And his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and purple, green, brown? No. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. Clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. Our righteousness in Christ. And being washed in his blood, people. Verse 9. And he saith unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. For he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. All right, Revelation 19, verse 11. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. This is Christ. In righteousness he doth judge and make war. War upon the wicked people, right? Verse 12. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Wow. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings, and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast, the beast, and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And people, I think this space force that the Air Force has, I honestly believe that is to meet this event. But that's my guess. And I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse, Christ, and against his army. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet, the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast. And no, I don't think the vaccine is the mark of the beast. Because the mark, the, the, the mark of the beast, 666, is going to be in the right hand or in the forehead. We're not there yet, but they're getting everybody ready. Oh, you don't have the vaccine? Well, you, you, you can't work here. Because you're dangerous. Yeah. You got to be vaccinated, dude. Because, Yeah. So, I guess uh, if you're not, mine doesn't work, right? It's something like, I don't know, something like that. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire, burning with brimstone. You know what brimstone is? Burning sulfur. 
and the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. Wow. Oh, yeah. Not very good. All right, let's get ready to close this Bible study down. Revelation chapter 20, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Satan's going to be bound for a thousand years. And cast him into a bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. So Satan's going to be bound for a thousand years and then he's going to be released for a little bit. Verse 4. And I saw thrones and they sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them I saw the souls of them that were beheaded, chopped off, guillotine, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast. Neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. And the thousand years is only the introduction, people. But the rest of the dead the unsaved, but the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Notice there's not a resurrection before the rap, uh, tr before the tribulation. Uh, somehow Baptists can't figure that one out. They just, they, they can't do it. There's only two resurrections. There's one at the end of the tribulation, and then there's another one at, after the end of the thousand years. You want to be in the first one. There's not one before the, the tribulation. It doesn't happen. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison, and shall... Go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city and fire, fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne. This is the white throne judgment, people. This is for the unsaved, the wicked. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was no place, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. We're not saved by our works, but if you're saved by the blood of Christ, uh, your rank, if you were ever in the army, you got privates, you got sergeants, you got lieutenants, captains, colonels, generals. You know, you're going to have a rank in heaven, a level of responsibility. But the wicked are going to be judged by their works because they were never, their sins were never covered by the blood of Christ. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. Think about all the many that died in World War II in the Pacific War. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged, every man, according to their works. 
and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire, this is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life, make sure your name's not blotted out of the book of life. Well, they tell you eternal security, once saved, always saved. Just remember, God can blot your name out of the book of life if he wants to. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So people, make sure you're, you're, uh, you're given a robe washed in his blood and be given that white robe of righteousness washed in the blood of Christ. Very important. You know, almost all the churches in America teach, uh, oh, we're not going to be here. We're not going to have to die for Christ to get our heads cut off. No, uh -uh, that ain't going to happen. Well, what can I tell you? They're going to find out and uh, it ain't going to be pretty. Uh, there's going to probably be a few people apologize to me, but I'm going to there's going to be a lot of people I'm going to be apologizing to them, too. So, yeah. Well, I hope you enjoyed this study. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.